Hello, today we are going to solve the questions on the activity 2.3.8 residential water supply. The procedure number one. So we are going to use the information is provided here and the this site plan to be able to answer the question A through E. Let's start first first question calculate the static head for the A let's calculate the static head so to be able to calculate the static head uh, we need to use the formula which is the static head equals elevation of the water tower minus elevation of the site so for the this part if I solve the question so what is the static head static head equals elevation of the water tower is given us 872.81 feet on the question minus so we need to find the elevation of the site you can get the elevation of the site from the graph actually it shows here it's 769 feet 769 feet if you subtract them your answer for this question is going to be 109 point 81 fit okay that's the answer for a now let's continue b for b calculate the head loss including the losses for pipe fittings so there are a lot of calculations here so how can we calculate the head loss first we need to use the formula uh the formula is what was the name of the formula hazel um hazel something something so hf equals 10.44 times l times q to the power of 1.85 blah 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 you can find the formula in the presentation okay and how can we calculate the loss for pipe fittings we are gonna use hazen williams constant equivalent length uh, of generic and fitting so we are gonna use these information okay to be able to find the answers so let's say um first thing we need to write it on the formula so i'm gonna type it the formula here first the formula that we are going to use is hf hazen williams uh the head loss formula this is the head loss formula by the way head loss formula due to the friction equals 10.44 times l which is the length of the pipe and uh, including fittings q to the power of 1.85 q here is um um the gallons per minute that's that's going to be uh, the pipes flow rate okay it's given to us uh, divided by c the hazel um hazel williams constant depends on the material which material you used to power of 1.85 um, times the diameter of the pipe to power of power of 4.8655 all right so this is the formula we are going to use and where can we get the um, the elbows teeth return bands walls elbows all of them is you guys are going to use these information okay depends on the pipe size if it is 90 degree regular 90 degree you are going to find the pipe size and it's going to give you the length of the elbows okay so i'm going to go back to activity to be able to calculate them or just calculate them here so first of all if i check the questions it says 3.12 miles pipe so the first thing we need to write it down here 3.12 miles and when we convert them to feet we need to multiply 5 to 80 and when you multiply the answer is going to be 16 4 7 3 point six and we have seven ninety degree so seven ninety degree 
um, here if I check it flinch 790 degrees and if I check it they are supposed to be 14 because it says the pipe diameter 10 right so each one is 14 so I'm not gonna check for the each one I'm gonna just type it the formula and uh, the variables what do I have 7 times 12 feet so it's going to be cool 84 and I have 1 45 degree and uh, 7.7 .7 feet each so it's going to be 7.7 .7. And I have 145 degree again. That's the 7.7 .7 feet. And if I multiply all of them, and if I add them all, the answer is going to be, if I add them all, the answer is going to be 16.565.3 feet. I don't need this one actually this is not here okay so the total length here goes to here guys and q is given to me q is given to me which is 100 q is 100 and i have the c c is given which is 100 how do i know it is 100 because the material it is used cast iron so and if i check it it shows them here guys that is 100 okay and d is given d equals here 8 if you plug them in all in the formula hf equals 6.98 feet okay that's the answer let's make it better all right 6.98 it's hard to see but let's write it down here 6.98 feet okay that's for the B. Now, let's go to C. Calculate the dynamic head at the point of the discharge on the 10th street. And let's calculate it. Actual pressure. Calculate the head, head at the point of the discharge under the 10th street. So we need to calculate the dynamic head. And the dynamic head formula dynamic head for the c we are solving dynamic head equals static head minus static head minus head loss here the stat uh, static head we calculated uh, the static head given actually to us. What is the static head? Uh, 109.81 that we calculated on the A. 109.81 minus on the previous question we calculated head loss 6.98. Let's say let's um, run them to 7 feet. And when we subtract them, 102. Point eighty one fit. This is the answer for the C. Okay, so we answered A, B, and C. Let's move on to D. Okay, now I'm going to calculate D. Leave screenshot. Okay, let's calculate the D. For the D, calculate actual pressure. So for the D, actual pressure. equals dynamic head which is we calculated on the previous times 1 psi over 2.31 feet 
Actually you are converting feet to PSI, it's going to give you actual pressure. On the previous uh, question for the C, we calculated dynamic head 102.81 times 1 over 2.31. When you multiply it, the answer is going to be 44.51 PSI. Okay. That is solved. And let's move E. Is the is the actual pressure is the actual pressure uh, sufficient for the residential use? Yes, because it should be between 4D and 80. It is between 4D and 80. Yes. Should a pressure reducing valve be installed? No, no, because pressure is is sufficient. Right. I hope this video can help you to solve the questions A through E. Have a wonderful day. Bye.